Hello everyone. This is Xin Hao Yan, a PhD student from University of Michigan. The topic I'm going to present today is a data-driven simulation of naturalistic driving environment for autonomous vehicle testing. So the first thing is that the AV testing and ev evaluation is very important for the AV de development and deployment. So the microscopic traffic simulation provides a testing platform for AV testing. The key idea is to test the AV safety performance in the simulation environment and make statistical comparisons with human driver performance. Uh, for example, here are two widely used microscopic traffic simulators, uh, which is vSIM and SUMO. Uh, so, however, one key problem is that for this existing microscopic uh, simulation platform is that the traffic behavior models lack the fidelity and those cannot be directly used for AV testing purposes. Uh, the major goal for the existing behavior models is to evaluate the traffic efficiencies and emissions of the large-scale transportation systems. Therefore, the traffic behavior models were designed to roughly capture the normal behavior patterns, and usually only a small set of data is used for model calibration. However, for the AV testing purposes, the major goal is to evaluate the accident rate of the autonomous vehicle in a real-world traffic environment. And for uh, human drivers, the accident rate is normally about 10 to the minus six to 10 to the minus eight per mile uh, from the naturally driving data. Therefore, for this rare, uh, for this uh, rarely, uh, rare events of the accidents, the traffic behavior models should be precise in both normal and rare conditions. Therefore, we can see there's a huge gap and need to be filled. Uh, we denote this problem as the naturally driving environment modeling problem. Uh, uh, we need to generate a model, a model and generate a naturalistic driving environment, which is stochastic, naturalistic, and accident inclusive. So to generate such a realistic naturalistic driving environment, the behavior model of the uh, vehicles needs, needs to be distributionally consistent with the real world traffic environment. Uh, this is a illustration figure. The axis, axis here is the action given a state, for example, the acceleration uh, in the free flow uh, free flow situation. And the y-axis here is the probability of different actions. So to generate such a realistic environment, the probabilistic distribution needs to not only capture the driving behavior in normal, normal situations, but also in rare conditions. And to further, to further extend this idea, we denote the state and action of vehicles as S and A. And the vehicle behavior model is actually a function. It's a fun mapping F from the state to action space. And the function f should be a stochastic function and its distribution should be consistent with the real world traffic environment. Therefore, we propose the framework of the data-driven naturalistic driving environment modeling. There are three, de three steps. The first one is the naturalistic uh, driving data collection and pre-processing. So naturalistic uh, driving data, which is uh, NDD is very important because it records the actions of the behavior. Uh, it, it records the human driving behaviors when, giving dif when facing different situations. And this is very important if you want to construct a realistic environment. Uh, here we used uh, NDD uh, collected, from the, uh, collected by the Armtree at the University of Michigan for this study. And the second step is, to, uh, is the data-driven driving behavior modeling. From the NDD, we can classify the driving behaviors into uh, different categories. For example, the car falling, lane changing, free flow, for example. And then we can get the empirical behavior models, empirical uh, distributions of the behaviors. For example, here, this figure shows the longitudinal acceleration distribution in the free flow driving situations, given different speed of the eagle vehicle. And uh, however, due to the inevitably data noise and also the high dimensional nature of the human driving behaviors, the you simply use the empirical behavior models may result uh, into uh, bad results uh, with, uh, because the error would accumulate along the simulation. So therefore we propose the optimization based smoothing techniques to improve based on the empirical behavior models to match the empirical measurement distribution. Here, for example, we choose the velocity distribution, uh, which is, which is uh, directly obtained from the NDD we want to match the simulated velocity distribution of the simulation with the empirical velocity distribution from the real world. 
And then after the uh, second step, we can construct the data-driven naturalistic driving environment with the uh, data-driven initialization method as also proposed in this work to generate the entire simulation, for, uh, sim simulation environment. Uh, here is uh, how, we, uh, how we optimize the longitudinal behavior models. Due to the time limit, I won't go into the details of the optimization formulation, but the key idea is that we model the NDE as a Markov chain, and the convex optimization problem is formulated to optimize the longitudinal behavior model to reach a realistic NDE. And then to validate the performance of our methods, we collected the trajectory data from our simulation and compared with the few widely used benchmark uh, driving behavior models. The top two figures shows the velocity and spacing, uh, spacing distribution collected from the simulation. The blue bar is the ground truth obtained from the naturalistic driving environment, which is the velocity distribution and the spacing distribution in the real world. And the, uh, and the yellow bar here is the simulated results. Uh, and the green bar is the initialization uh, results also from the given by our initialization method. And the bottom two figures shows the two widely used uh, driving behavior models, which is the intelligent driver models and the Widman models. These parameters of these models are calibrated from the naturalistic driving data from Virginia Tech and Shanghai. And notice that the Widman model is actually the default carpooling model for the VSIM. And comparing this result, we can find our proposed method can significantly capture the stochastic and also naturalistic of the uh, human driving behaviors. And due to these two models lack the uh, stochastic and does not consider the distribution inconsistent with the real world driving environment measurement. So we can find the velocity distribution and spacing distribution of these benchmark methods are very dense and concentrated in certain interval rather than distributed naturally in this whole, uh, in this whole interval. And then for, to further validate our proposed NDE, we, we choose a, a AV model to test in this uh, proposed environment. The AV under test we use uh, is the, uh, use the IDM and the mobile models with calibrated parameters. And after about 25 million driving miles for the AV testing on highway, we can obtain the uh, accident, rate, accident rate result as shown in this left figure. The axis here shows, uh, denotes, shows the number of tests and the Y axis here shows the accident rate. You can find the estimated accident rate is about two times 10 to the minus six accident per mile. And it took about uh, nine, to, nine times 10 to the power of seven test time to reach the estimation error. Uh, estimation accuracy, which is we set as 20%, as shown in this figure. We can see after this point, it, the estimation results converge and uh, within the 20% uh, relative error. So you can find the proposed NDE can actually be used for testing AV uh, safety performance in such a, uh, uh, for this rare event, which is accidents. And here also from the AV testing results, diverse accidents cases can be generated. And all this kind of uh, accident cases is very valuable and can provide information regarding to the AV and the test and can be further used for uh, AV performance improvement. Uh, here I choose two examples, which is cutting case and land conflict case. The blue vehicle here is the AV and the test and the green vehicles in the, uh, in the videos is the background vehicle. So I will play this video. In this video, we can find the background vehicle is doing a cutting maneuver and because of the big uh, difference of the relative speed, the autonomous vehicle tried to do an evasive lane changing maneuver, but because uh, but it failed. So there's an accident happens here. And uh, on the right case, this is a land conflict situation where the autonomous vehicle and the background vehicle, this green one, is doing a lane changing maneuver simultaneously to our same target lane. And actually these cases uh, let tells, shows the drawbacks of the mobile model. Because the mobile lane changing model only considers information of vehicles on the adjacent lane. So it um, ignores the vehicle's information on all other lanes. That's why the uh, CAV uh, tries to make a lane changing maneuver here, but the accident happens. So from this testing results and accident cases, we can learn more and uh, have deeper understanding of the AV and their test. And we can use these cases for further improvement to uh, improve their safety performance. Did you and actually th run the video? I didn't see any video. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, can ah, you see the left? Yep. Uh, okay. So this one is the cutting cases. The yep. uh, okay. 
the right one is the, oh, can you see this one? Yep. Okay, so the so blue one and the green vehicles is doing a lane changing simultaneously to the same target lane. So there's an accident happens. And yeah, after these cases, we can find uh, this information can help us to improve the AV afterwards. Uh, sorry. Okay, this is uh, uh, our results. And I, finally, I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Professor, uh, Professor Hong Yi Liu for supervising and guiding this research. And I also want to acknowledge Dr. Shua Feng and Hao Weisun for collaborating in this research. And that's all, thank you. Uh, please feel free to ask if you have any questions. Uh, okay, I have a question. So you showed at the end that the estimation results has 20% error. So my question is first, where are the errors coming from? So for example, which parameters are the most difficult to simulate that's introducing such a large error? Uh, so the relative error here is uh, actually not coming from maybe the parameters, but because like uh, if you want to estimate the accident rate of a uh, autonomous vehicle, actually you need to do like infinite, uh, let it run infinitely long and we can, the, the final result will converge, but apparently we cannot afford to run uh, infinitely long distance. So mm -hmm. we will choose uh, when the accident rate is kind of not fluctuating and converge, we will think that is the uh, acceptable estimated accident rate. So that's where's the arrow coming from. Okay, so basically you're saying that if you run it, keep running it much longer, then the air is going to go down. And at some point, many, many, many like simulation is going to converge to a very small error. Okay, uh, next question is when you're simulating and you showed some plot, um, it's still not clear how accurate of all the vehicle and driving models are with respect to the real uh, car and the real driver situation. So the, what percentage of error you see there in the simulation? Uh, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, the idea we are using here is that uh, we the behavior model is directly come from the NDD data and after optimization, then we mm -hmm. choose a certain measurements to to measure the error, whether right. this simulation pr produce a good good sim environment uh, comparing with the real world. So here we choose velocity and spacing because the velocity of vehicles and the distance between each vehicles is very important and will affect AV, AV performance in the testing, right? So we choose these parameters to see the simulated velocity distribution of vehicles and the simulated spacing distribution of the vehicles, how they are compared, how they are performed compared with the real world data. And also we compare with the benchmark methods. We can find the comparing with these two benchmark methods, definitely uh, obviously our methods is better, but of course uh, uh, there's still a uh, room to improve to make it the, these blue bars and, uh, and the uh, yellow bars more closer. But yes, that's well, like the further step we need to for make this distribution much more closer. Yes, do you have an idea of what you need to do to make the distribution be much closer? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, the, the reason why there's still a gap between here is because uh, in the optimization uh, step, we do some relaxation. So the model is not uh, exactly accurate for the computational uh, burden uh, consideration. So Maybe in the future we will use uh, we will improve the optimization uh, formulation to make it more accurate to uh, discard some of the realizations. And another way is that we might try different methods, maybe the machine learning based methods, to uh, to substitute these optimization methods to further improve the model per performance. 